So the Biden administration has just come out of the imperial closet and admitted what I have been saying to you on this channel since the very start of the war in Ukraine. And that is that it is absolutely not in our interests for this war to continue. And in actual fact, all it's trying to do is support this so-called liberal world order. But what exactly is that and how can we apply a significant critique to it? Let's find out. I'm Stuart Hooper, a lecturer in political science and PhD researcher. Be sure to subscribe if you are new here to the channel where I look at international politics from a critical perspective. Not the left and not the right. I'm not interested in mainstream political parties or mainstream ideologies. They are the very forces that have gotten the world into such a terrible position. At the very least, hit like on this video and please leave me your comments below. That helps to generate a little bit of buzz around the channel and get the videos out into the YouTube algorithm, which is increasingly hard to get into. So I'd really appreciate the help there. Otherwise, as I mentioned, a Biden administration advisor who must be giving some very interesting advice, let's just put it that way, to say the least, came out on TV and openly admitted why everything is currently going in the way it is in the world. Why that you have to suffer the inflationary spiral which is destroying world economies. And it is world economies. This isn't just Western economies. Go and look at what is going on in Sri Lanka right now or Ecuador. The global economy is falling apart. But you know what? It's all good because it's happening for the good of the so-called liberal world order. Now, this advisor was asked, well, what do you say to families who are currently saying, we can't afford to pay four eighty-five dollars a gallon for months, if not years, this is not sustainable? And the answer from this individual was, what you have heard from the president today was a clear articulation of the stakes. This is about the future of the liberal world order. And we have to stand firm. So first of all, I would like to extend a personal thank you to Brian Deese, the advisor in question. Um, thank you very much, Brian, for confirming everything I've been saying on this channel for the past few months. The war in Ukraine is not doing anything for us personally. It's not helping anyone in a domestic sense move forward in their life. In fact, this is only of benefit to the forces in favor of a liberal world order. In other words, forces in favor of globalism, of economic globalization, of political and military globalization, of course, as well. But what exactly is this liberal world order? Well, it's an attempt of the Western world to shape all of the other countries on our planet in their image. In other words, if we could only just shift all the other countries in the world to being democracies and to having free markets and to having the rule of law and if everyone could vote and if anyone could open a business and become prosperous and if this was all governed by institutions like NATO and the United Nations and the World Trade Organization, well, surely the whole world would be better off for that. Well, maybe not. Two big examples, of course, Afghanistan and Iraq. Do those places look any better after going through a process of being forcibly shaped into an image of the Western world's making? No, they do not. And another serious problem with this whole concept of a liberal world order is that the Western world itself, and we're talking specifically France, the US, and the UK, well... Those nations never really hesitate to break the so-called rules of liberalism to achieve their own interests. If liberalism is so fantastic, if democracy is so great, 
Why is the United States best buddies with Saudi Arabia? Anyone got any thoughts on that one? And the problems also go beyond hypocrisy. For example, there's no real evidence that just because you shape a country into a free market democracy, that all of a sudden it's going to want to join your globalist regime. What if the people in that country vote for a government that is against globalism? Oh, wait a second. How could I be so stupid? Well, of course, we just have then the CIA and MI6 who can go into that country, overthrow that government, and install a puppet regime that will align with globalism. And if you think that's far-fetched or a joke, just go and look at Chile and Iran. Two great historical examples of where you simply cannot deny that that is precisely what happened. And like I mentioned with Iraq and Afghanistan, these so-called democratized countries remain inherently unstable for decades and in many cases collapse and revert back to where they were before. But who foots the bill for that? You and I. That is precisely what is going on right now. Now, and when it comes to economic globalization, this idea of spreading the so-called free market everywhere, that's not a free market for you and I. That's a free market for massive transnational corporations. And what has that free market created over the past, what are we at? Uh, let's say 40, 50 years of where it's been really an unrestrained free market. Has that created a, a stable financial system? No. It's been a system of constant crisis. Constant booms, constant busts. And if I've still not convinced you that what is going on here is not in our interests, we'll just take a look at this. Boris Johnson wants to recreate the Roman Empire's ideas about European cooperation. Now, this is just something that you can't make up. He said, quote, I had this idea back when I first became foreign secretary. My view is that we should rebuild the whole concept of, so I think that Turkey should be in there. I think the Maghreb should be in there. I think we should basically be recreating the Roman Empire. Boris Johnson, of course, now resigned from his position of prime minister. But that doesn't mean that's going to get us away from this whole idea of recreating an empire across the entire world. No, this comes back to the point I was making at the very start of this video. If you think voting Republican or voting Democrat or voting Conservative or voting Labour is going to get us away from this idea, you're completely wrong. Those mainstream parties are absolutely wedded to the concept of globalism. There are a few individual voices in those parties which occasionally stand up and say, you know what, maybe this isn't the best idea, maybe we shouldn't be supporting a, a global military empire, maybe we shouldn't be invading anyone and everyone who doesn't go along with us, doesn't want to play ball with us, um, but those people are the minority. They don't control these parties, they don't control how the world really works, they're kind of uh, just a blip on the radar overall. And this was a good article that I saw earlier today, which brings us back to Ukraine. There is no magic bullet that can turn the tide for Ukraine. In other words, no matter how many hundreds of millions of dollars are funneled into the military industrial complex to supposedly prop up this liberal world order, it's not going to be a victory. This is not only a waste of time and money, this is a waste of life. There needs to be a negotiated settlement in Ukraine and it needs to happen now. Yes, that means the Russians have to come to the table as well. They should never have invaded. Yes, I understand Ukraine wants to defend themselves, get their territory back. But you also have to live in the realm of reality. And in some cases, that means being pragmatic. And, in, and leaving some of these, what are now really lofty goals, behind.
Remember to subscribe if you've made it all the way through to the end of this video. Would love to have you as a regular viewer on my channel. I'm also on other social media channels, which you can find in the description of this video. I'm only a couple of followers off from 1000 on Twitter, so would love to be ticked over the line there if anyone wants to help out. Um, hopefully this video was useful and you guys learned something from this. Um, this whole concept of a liberal world order is very serious. It's kind of the central focus of my PhD research. Uh, the fact that this is really presented as the reason for going to war, for killing people, for destroying countries. This whole concept has a lot to answer for beyond simply just raising gas prices. So there's going to be a continued focus on that on this channel and I'll be back with more videos real soon.